We are now starting the last step of protein synthesis, which is translation. I real quick want to review what we just did. We went ahead and transcribed a DNA molecule into an mRNA molecule. And because mRNA is single-stranded and it's able to leave the nucleus, it exits through something called a nuclear pore, and it moves to the ribosome. One thing that's confusing for a lot of you is the differences between each of these RNAs. Remember, anytime we're using an RNA, I don't care if it's tRNA, rRNA, or mRNA, we are going to use the nucleotides A pairing with U and G pairing with C. What we have here is we still have our mRNA, mRNA molecule, our messenger RNA. This is what actually determines the amino acid that will be um, exemplified when you're solving for it using one of these charts, okay? The thing is, tRNA is what actually brings that amino acid to this codon. Remember, every three nucleotides represents a codon. The other thing I want to clarify is what rRNA is. You can see that these things that I'm going to start using with you are the tRNA, but the rRNA is just another word for the ribosome. This purple thing right here is the rRNA. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and find the tRNA molecule that appropriately matches a AUG. Remember, AUG is the start codon. It's the only codon that starts um, being read in a sequence of nucleotides. So A would pair with U, U would pair with A, and G would pair with C. So we need to find that nucleotide, AUG, okay? So right here, I have the tRNA molecule. I want you to notice that it's UAC. If you were to look up on your codon chart, UAC, it would not represent MET. The only thing that represents MET is AUG. This is the reason why the mRNA strand is what actually determines what the amino acid is. The tRNA just brings it to the mRNA. So what happens is this tRNA molecule locks into the mRNA, and what we have here is an amino acid. So the tRNA's job is it brings that amino acid to the codon on the mRNA. And we call this codon on the tRNA an anticodon. So we slide down the ribosome and we go to the next codon after the start codon, CAC. So we need to find GUG. So what we're going to look for is GUG. We're going to plug that in right here. And again, we've got two amino acids. We've got two tRNAs. What's going to happen is, do you see how it hits that end of the ribosome? This MET, this amino acid, is actually going to go into this amino acid. Remember that amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. This tRNA molecule is going to break off, and it's going to go back to the cytoplasm to look for another amino acid and to pair with another mRNA because all of this stuff is happening simultaneously. As we move on now, we have GAG. So that would be CUC. So we've got to look for CUC. Glutamine. Same deal. We're going to hit this portion of the ribosome or the rRNA. We're going to plug it into this amino acid, elongating the protein. This is going to go out into the cytoplasm and look for more amino acids. You can see that our protein is now forming. Now, UAG. UAG is an example of a stop codon. If you use this, for example, UAG stop, or you could use this one, UAG stop codon. That stop codon determines that that ribosome or that rRNA is going to stop reading that mRNA sequence. And what happens now is this amino acid chain is now a protein and it is released and that is what's going to determine the phenotypes or those physical characteristics in our body. So just a recap, mRNA molecule in translation comes to the ribosome. These are each codons, each three nucleotide sequences. The anticodon on the tRNA brings an amino acid and the rRNA or the ribosome is going to assemble those amino acids until it reaches a stop codon.